seven valleys of sufis or seven valleys of meditation these are like stumbling blocks these were given by one of the sufis al ghazali the seven valleys but before i enter into the seven valleys it is important to know one of the parables of hazrat imam zafar sadiq razi allah taala anhu a naqshbandi sufi sheikh there was once a woman who abandoned the religion in which she had been brought up she left the ranks of the atheists too and joined another faith then she became convinced of the truth of yet another path each time she changed her beliefs she imagined she had gained something of substance but not quite enough each time she entered a new path she was welcomed also her entry was regarded as a good sign a sign of her sincere aspirations and wisdom her inward state however was one of confusion and misery she heard of a certain celebrated naqshbandi sheikh imam zafar sadiq razi allah taala anhu thus she went to see him imam zafar sadiq listened to her attentively after he had listened to her protestations and ideas he told her return to your home i shall send you my decision in a message soon afterwards the woman found a disciple of the sheikh at the door in his hand he had a packet from the master she opened the packet eagerly and saw it had contained a glass bottle half full with three layers of packed sand of black red and white color different colors were held down by a wad of cotton on the outside was written remove the cotton and shake the bottles to see what you have reduced to she did so as she was told to do she took the wadding out and shook the bottle the different colors of grains of sand mixed together and all that she was left with a mass of greish sand i have deliberately used this parable of imam zafar sadiq to take you into sufi tarikat to explain seven values i have heard one day mulla nasruddin heard that a man has left the faith that he was born in and joined the islamic faith someone asked him what do you say about him he said that man is really a very wise man he know that islam is the real truth he has chosen the path and come to the right fold and he is sure to get what he wants he is welcome in the faith after some time it happened someone from the islamic faith changes fold to another one the same person asked mulla what do you say about him he said that man's ill fortune has come he has left the path of truth and gone into the wrong direction in the path of devil he is sure to get not the place even in hell he had to suffer the situation is the same the person has changed his belief from one path or religion to another how can there be two different two different opinions this is how we live our life of spirituality whatever we do we believe is considered to be right and not that what others do i have deliberately used this parable of imam zafar sadiq to take you into sufi tarikat to explain seven valleys of sufis these valleys refer to various stumbling blocks that seekers face along the path to inward journey when you start the journey there are many obstacles you remain quite unaware of these stumbling blocks i am presenting my message for not only those on the sufi path is to the seekers of various paths 
and to create an aura of spiritual awareness, it is important. Parables are the unique way of Sufi masters to say all that cannot be said. Just as Zen masters use coal and through the coal many things can be said which cannot be said otherwise. Just as many things can be said through the jokes of Mullah Nasruddin, it was a character that was developed by Sufi Idris Shah and he brought him to the West and many jokes based on the day-to-day -day circumstances and situations have been woven around Mullah Nasruddin. This, the purpose of this talk is to create an aura of spiritual awareness and parables are the unique way of spiritual, of Sufi masters to say all that cannot be said. Something before I take you into the actual parable, Imam Zafar Sadiq Razi Latalavnu is the Naqshbandi master, the sixth after Holy Prophet. These seven valleys were explained by Imam Al-Ghazali as the stumbling blocks along the path to transformation. Man is a paradox within. Also man is the only creature, the only being that is paradoxical. This is his uniqueness as well as his misery. All other animals are non-paradoxical. A tree is tree, a dog is a dog. However, man is never in a state of ishness. He is many things other than being a man. That is his uniqueness as well as misery. He is always to become and grow. Man is always striving to surpass himself. This is his paradox. And it is the cause of his being as well. It is not accidental. Instead, it is very fundamental. Once you understand this paradox, you have the first glimpse about the whole phenomenon that humanness is. You will understand what man is. Man is always a project of becoming something. His being consists of becoming. This is the paradox. He is always between that which he was and that which he is also what he wants to be. He is always between his past and future. As a bridge hanging between two eternities, the past, the extremities, the past and the future. He is a surpassing, a continuous surpassing, overlooking the present moment. Man is never content with all that which he is, is trying to go beyond. And in that he never pauses to enjoy the moment that is enriched in front of, fragrant, full of beauty and lustre. Whatsoever he is doing, all his effort is basically how to become something more, something higher and something better. This is the paradox. Man is a progress, a pilgrim, thus his life remains an unending pilgrimage. A dog is born, a tree is born. A tree is born with all its treeness and the dog is born with its dogness. Man is not given fact. He is born only with a potentiality, with a potential. Man is born as a blank, as a nothing, as a nothingness and nothing is written on his inner sky. All other beings have a certain essence, a certain soul. In man it is just the reverse. His existence comes first and then he starts seeking for his essence. In other animals essence comes first then existence. They already bring a built-in program and they never grow beyond that. In fact they remain the same. This is the reason that they look so innocent, so unworried and so non-tense. Look into the eyes of a cow. There is peacefulness and tranquility. There is no anxiety or anguish or clouds. Look into the eyes of a man. They are always cloudy. They always have anguish. There is always trembling. The trembling is of three types. 
first is the trembling of whether I am going to make it or not. The second is the trembling of whether I will be able to find myself or not. And the third trembling of whether I will be fulfilled or remain unfulfilled. The animals are at ease and relaxed. Man is the tension in constant turmoil. This is his glory and his anguish too. This is his dignity and this is his problem as well. This is his glory because he is capable of creating himself. He is a potentiality of blossoming. And it is his anguish as well because the possibility of failure also exists. He may not be able to create himself. Who knows? This is his glory because of freedom that he has. He has not been programmed. He is the only creature who remains without a program. Man is the only being who is uncommanded. Comes into existence empty and then he starts grouping for his being. Then he starts grouping and creating and searching. Man is an adventure. But with the adventure there is uncertainty, insecurity, failure and fear. He can always go wrong. There is more possibility of going astray and less possibility of being right. There is a thousand and one ways. He does not know which is the right one. You are always anxious and whatsoever you choose, you choose with uncertainty because you can never be certain whether this path will lead you to your goal or will end in cul-de-sac. There is no certainty whether it will reach anywhere or will just end in a desert. Man's glory is his freedom that he can create himself. He can be himself, that nothing is forced on him. He exists as an open-ended possibility. This brings misery as well. Man cannot be certain, can never be certain that he is on the right path that whatsoever he is doing is meaningful or not. Man is the only creature who goes mad. He has problems to face, to solve and to grow beyond. This is the first thing I would like you to understand. There was a great Sufi master, one of the greatest of all ages, Al Ghazali. He says on the path of human growth from man to God, from man the potential to man the actual, from the possibility to reality, there are seven values. These seven values are of immense significance. Try to understand them because you will have to pass through these seven values. Everyone has to pass through those seven values. If you understand rightly what to do with a value, you will be able to go beyond it. And having crossed the valley, you will attain to a peak. Valleys and peak go together. Remember each valley is surrounded by mountain, mountain peak. If you can pass through the valley without getting entangled in the valley or getting lost or without becoming too attached to the valley or you remain aloof, detached as a witness, and if you keep on remembering that this is not your home, that you are just a stranger here, and you go on remembering that the peak has to be reached, and you do not forget the peak, you will certainly reach to the peak. With each valley crossed, there comes a great celebration.